So at this point in time, it's pretty obvious that front-end engineers earn substantially less than back-end engineers. And depending on the website you're looking at, and of course your location and seniority, we're talking about at least 20 to 40K. Now, they both work eight hours. And I've seen many cases where the front engineer had more years of experience than the back-end one, but still the back-end engineer was earning more. And when you back to ask the question why, people will say, of course, back-end, it's, it's more complex, right? which is why backend developers should earn more. But I feel like this idea of backend being more complex comes from the past, where most applications were very backend heavy in the last few years with frameworks like React. And more recently with AI being served via chatbots, via interfaces, it feels like front engineers are also doing a very important job because no matter how good your, your software or your app is, the UI, the front end, it's in many cases the only way the user can actually extract value out of the software, which actually makes front engineers a core piece to any tech company. So in this video, I wanted to dive a bit deeper and really understand why do backend engineers earn more than front end ones? And I will give you two ways to work around it as a front engineer, because here's the good news. Just because you work on the front end, you don't have to be earning less. And the first point is that there are more front end engineers in the market. And there's a reason why. Because learning front end, it's a lot easier than back end. Uh, you know, you have a lot more material if you go to YouTube or Udemy courses or any kind of platform, right? We all know that I started in the front end, Bogdan started in the, in the front end. Actually, a lot of the developers you probably know started in the front end because it's easier. The front end also provides a quicker feedback loop, right? So you do something and you see it pop it up in the screen, which makes it a lot more accessible for beginners who might need quick feedback for them to, to stay motivated. Also, many bootcamps taught front-end only. And finally, self-taught devs are more likely to avoid backend because algorithms, data structures, databases are a bit more abstract. Again, going back to the, to the feedback loop and to the UI being something visual, which can be intimidating. So these days, you see most people who are trying to learn how to code, they're going straight for the front-end. And by the way, folks, my name is Dragos. I'm a self-taught JavaScript engineer. And together with my brother Bogdan, here in the picture, we built the Senior Dev, where we help JavaScript engineers level up to senior and beyond, and of course, become irreplaceable in the current job market. If you want to learn more about what we do and how we could help you, then check the links below. On to the second argument, why backend engineers make more than front engineers, it's backend, it's more critical. And if you talk to most company founders, product managers, product owners, you will realize they do have the impression that backend devs are more critical, right? specifically on the business side. And that's because usually backend engineers deal with a lot more sensitive business data, things like customer data, authentication. And while it's true that front engineers might also handle this kind of data, it's the backend that usually makes sure that this data is handled and stored properly. And as you can imagine, data is very important for a business, meaning that if someone mishandles or makes mistakes in the backend, it's going to cost the company a lot more, which is the second point here. Backend bugs can cost the company a lot more than frontend ones. So for example, if a certain part of the UI is stuck, we're not working, it's not the same as people being unable to pay because the payment service is failing. And finally, a lot of big enterprises hire more backend engineers than frontend devs. And what usually happens with these big companies who can hire more backend engineers, it's they can also pay people more in general, everybody. So if you look at the average numbers, you will see backend engineers earning more than front end just because there's more backend engineers working for bigger companies. And the third point would be that AI is slightly better at front end. And this is something that most of us did not anticipate it. So mainstream opinion was that backend might be easier for AI than frontend because LLMs can digest, right? Structure data way easier than mockups or UI state. What happened? It turned out that security issues and things like distributed systems are way harder for AI to understand simply because of the nature of those systems. And finally, there's also way more front-end code to train AI on, right? So with backend being more critical, companies don't want to expose their backend code, but they are a lot more likely to expose their front-end code, which generates a lot more training data, 
for the AI, leading to AI being actually better in the front end than the back end, which again was counterintuitive. And if you look at open AI website in the latest GPT-5, they actually specifically mentioned that the model excels at front end coding. And while I do believe that these structural factors that I mentioned on why front end engineers earn less than back end engineers, are at the same time, I believe there's a lot of stuff you can do as a front engineer to increase your salary. And that's what we're going to talk about next. What can you do as a front engineer? And the first thing you can do is to stay in the front end and on your mountain, on your hill, meaning that one strategy to very quickly increase your salary as a front engineer is to just get insanely good at the front end and switch jobs to companies who depend a lot on their UIs, right? So companies where the front end, it's adding a lot of value to the product. Usually those companies are consumer facing companies. And it doesn't always have to be B2C. Those can be e-commerce companies, SaaS companies, where the UI, it's the way for the user to extract value from the software, but any kind of company where the front end is critical. And even if you check companies like OpenAI, you will see they pay their front engineers very, very well. Because for them, the UI, the front end, it's a competitive advantage. Models are becoming a commodity, and that's where companies are trying to differentiate to better UI, more intuitive UI, in order to get more users. So that's the first strategy, get insanely good at the front end itself. And you have to go deep. You have to go into web performance, you have to go into accessibility, testing, front end architecture. If you don't know exactly what skills you might be lacking, there is a Tingle assessment in the comments. You just invest 10 minutes and you will get a full analysis of your Tingle gaps. And the second strategy is if you cannot beat them, join them. Right? And the idea is that you as a front engineer, you can move up the stack into the full stack and finally into the back end. This is actually the journey that many of us went through where you spend your first three to five years in the front end. Are you... You get very good at front end, but you also start getting better at programming in general. And then little by little, you move towards the API layer, maybe add a bit of GraphQL. Then you get into deployment, databases, and then finally software architecture, microservices, distributed systems. Now, a lot of the front engineers we mentored that try to make this transition towards a full stack struggle with one issue, bump into one huge challenge, which is, hey, uh, the full stack is so wide. There's so many different things I can get my hands on. There's infrastructure, you know, Terraform, AWS, Azure. Then there's backend self, you know, HTTP, REST APIs. So where should I start? And there's never an easy answer to that. But the simplest way to solve that, it's by starting with what you already know or what's closer to you, right? So if you're a front engineer and you spend most of your life working with you know, React or Vue, just try to get closer to the API layer, right? Don't, don't jump straight into databases. Don't jump straight into infrastructure. You will get there, uh, but always try to stay close to your base as you try to expand your, let's say, circle of competence. That's the best advice I can give you. And in this way, you make sure that you don't go too far from what you know, but you're also expanding what you know at the same time. And finally, of course, if you'd like Bogdan and I to help you go to this transition towards a more full stack, more senior developer who's not afraid of layoffs, afraid of AI, then check the link in comments and see how our premium mentorship program can help you get there.